What is up my guys and girls of YouTube? It is your boy Justin Omoe and today I'm gonna go about to show y'all how I did this vocal booth. Alright, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Alright, so starting off we are gonna take some wood and line them up. We gotta make them nice and even. I'm taking a little nail, putting them on both sides that I measured out for my cuts. These are all because I have to make an even cut within all these. They have a relative cut. So I took the chalk line, popped it, taking the circle saw, using it as unprofessionally as I can. I don't even know if that's a word, but you can see here, beautiful. So I take the other side and I, you know, prop it off. There you go. And then I realized you could do it on the table, make it nice and easier. Although that wasn't straight. So there's my cuts that I need. Whatever cuts y'all need depends on whatever y'all need. Here we go. I got the framing that I'm going to build up now. And this is where I had no idea about 2x4 not being 2x4. So yeah, I'm going to end up coming to this problem. As you saw right there, I traced it with that piece of wood. So it didn't give me accurate numbers. I'm just taking screws now, putting them in the corner, making sure they're nice and angled. Uh, right angled <laughs> now I'm gonna go ahead and do the vertical studs as you see right here and Yeah, now we're doing the sides and this is where I run into that problem where 2x4 is not 2x4 So what I did to fix it was take a jig and diagonally screw that excess piece and <laughs> Just put it in here. You go. I have the four frames really fast, right? I did it without y'all even noticing this is the right side of the wall. This is the wall that's facing the you know, me, when I'm sitting down, I look to the left, that's the wall, and yeah. Right here we have rock wool insulation. This is what is needed for the floor that I'm gonna build. I'm also using the drywall screws and the subfloor adhesive. We have a right angle, finally, my cousin. After I showed him the cuts, he's like, oh shoot, I should've gave you this. <laughs> so yeah, so you can see here I'm framing up the floor joist, making it, you know, pretty much stable to use. I have the OSB board. This is going to be the subfloor, pretty much. I'm cutting it down to size. I'm using the circle saw. This is probably the only time the circle saw was useful. Yeah, now I have it in my room. You see these little black things? These are ISO joist. This is to prevent the rumble from the floor, from the world shaking. It's uh, pretty much isolation. It's isolating out. You can see I took a cloth that was from um, Amazon. I bought it. It was supposed to be for like a table or something. I kind of cheesed it out. Um, now I'm putting rock wool inside of it. This is all pretty much self-explanatory here. And there you go. I filled it up and I realized I could have put the cloth over the top, but you know, don't tell the past me that you can see I'm now fitting in these two pieces to see if they're all good. And now I'm going to cock it up with my cock. I have my brother here and he did an excellent job helping me drop it down. Now you can see I'm screwing the drywall screws in on the borders. I'm doing two inches and in the middle, as you can see, there is more than two inches of a distance, more like four, five, six. You can see here I'm kind of like in emergency mode because there wasn't a long stud to support the OSB. So if I were to step in between those two, chances are we would have had a crack on the floor and I would have fell right through. So you can see here, just a little example of you don't have to be perfect. I was trying to cut off the excess OSB with the circle saw. And of course, no straight cuts around here, but so I cut into there and I realized when the saw or yeah, when the saw was shooting sparks, I'm like, damn, I hit a screw. So here we have the floor, um, the, the what you call the wall. <laughs> and I put some ISO clips on there as well. Now I'm going to remove some screws because I put too much, but I'm removing some by the uh, where the studs meet. And then I'm going to use these three inch or three and a half inch screws to pretty much get this wall solidified, solidified, solidified in. And I'm doing the same for all the other ones. And at this point, you know, attaching all these sides, it really, really feels like I'm actually doing something. You can see the smile on my face, too. Well, I had it just now. But we got a stable thing. Now we have to do the three corners. These are called California corners. And this is to give more support for the support that's already there. You can see I had to use a jig again because uh, the corner, not easy to screw in unless you screw at an angle or something. But here we go, screwing this in for more support. Of course, the bit comes off. That is what it is. And yeah, 
So I'm finishing up the California corners, and then I do something called a double plate, where I take another piece of stud and conjoin them to the wall's corners themselves for more protection. You see that piece of wall, uh, wood on the wall? That is to beam it onto the wall. That way, if a sumo wrestler comes in and tackles my build, it's not going to fall to the floor. It's being held in. And yes, I'm using that ISO clips. You can see I put on another piece of wood. This is called strapping. Pretty much I'm creating that top there. As you see, this is so we are able to put a top on. And you can see I'm taking OSB, or not OSB, a drywall, cutting it. I had to use two halves and pretty much drywall it in, or dry screw, you know, screw it in. I did it for this side here as well. And you can see that I wasn't online, although the ruler said I was the level. Pulling out the electric so I could put in this vapor barrier. This is not 6 millimeter, 0.6 millimeters. This is just like 0 0.03 or some crap that I found in my garage. This is to prevent the um, rock wall insulation from flying out, making my cats feel bad. I went ahead and cut the rest of the drywall, put it together. And again, mistakes happen. It is what it is. Don't fret it. You can see this piece of vapor barrier is that 0.6 or 0 0.06 milliliter, and I'm using it as a backing for this uh, electric outlet. That way, it'll be protected. Some people use like fireproof putty or something. I ain't got that. Here is my AC Infinity um, control panel, and I'm gonna set it inside of the walls, pretty much because that's what I had in my mind. And I'm finding a good sweet spot for both the intake and the outtake, the distance. Up here is going to be the outtake where the air is going to rise up because it's heated and go outside of my room. I put it behind my door or on top of my door just because it's one of the spots that really reaches out for that control panel. Taking a drywall knife, cut it through after I made some razor incisions. Did the same thing for the bottom. As you see here, I made a whole new piece. I just literally cut it and then I use that piece of wood to make a square around it. Now this is going to be my frame for the intake or the air that's coming inside of the booth, which it's not on because I want a clean sound. I took a drill bit, drilled through the piece of wood so the, the wire could fit, and then I'm going to go ahead and take the vapor barrier and staple up the top there. And you can see I did a bad job, and that's going to haunt my ass later on, y'all going to see. I'm taking some of that green glue stuff, smearing it in there, making sure this stuff is great. You can see my titty. Pre please hit like for that. And you can see how I'm doing a cockwalk job. I'm taking a hammer and using that. And then I use, you know, extra whatever. <laughs> but that thing really worked, though. It, it held it in. This red stuff is poly tape. I used it to cover all the staples. That way we, you know, prevent air or whatever from flowing through. I put the electric in. And I wanted to do this because I had the whole electric in my room cut off for the longest because I wanted to put this thing in because of live wires. Never want to work with live wires, man. Unless you're an electrician and shit. <laughs> you can see here, though. You can see here, though, that I have everything padded up, taped up. And the only sucky part was this piece here because, you know, that's wires and I can't really seal it in there nicely. But, yeah, I put the caulking on the bottom as well. And you can see here where it comes and bites my ass because I broke it. But I ended up um, just pulling out the staples, restapling it, making it nice and straight, finishing up with the tape. I put the uh, drywall in, fix up the corners. It's annoying. Make sure you guys learn about drywall installation before you try any of this stuff, man. It's annoying. And here you go, uh, 24.8 grams or uh, pounds of cocaine on my face. But I got that wall finish. As you see right here, it's okay if you have a gap. It's just natural. Things are never square around here. And yeah, I'm drawing the tracing along the drywall so I could pop in this thing. And yes, it is leveled. Now you can hear this piece here. I am scraping around to look for sounds. And if I hear sounds, that means I got to screw it in. So take a listen here. So that right there means that the screw is not in there enough. So I have to take my drill and go ahead and pop it in there a little bit more. That way, once I put in joint compound, it won't be an issue and it won't pop out. So here's the joint compound. I have a 20 minute one. You guys should find 45 minutes. I'm being honest. You can see here I'm doing a big boo boo mistake by using a lot of this compound. This is my first time around using it. Um, but, you know, allow me, allow me. 
<laughs> but here we go. I'm using that application here to fill up a corner and to put the tape on. The drywall tape is going to help make this corner, solidify this corner, and yeah, reinforce everything, make it look like an actual wall. And as soon as I reapply the layer, just to make sure, I realize my stuff is getting harder, so I'm filling up as much holes as I can with the rest of the joint compound and the spatula. And as you can see, I do a great job for the most of it. I do remember wasting a lot of it, so please use that in moderation. Use like one or two cups every time you use this thing. So you go, I'm doing the horizontals. Thankfully, I don't have something called a butt joint. If you guys have a butt joint, please learn to you know do the butt joint because that's a pain. Out here, I did more of a cock work because I know I have a orbital sander. And you can see that I went from um, I went from the bucket to a popcorn lid because you know it's easier for me to work with. I don't have to use a lot as I expected or unexpected, whatever the word is. Next up, I'm doing the inside ceiling corners, and I gotta stress this again: do not overlap this drywall tape, or else you guys are gonna have a bad time. So yeah, as you see here, just not stressing it just don't stress over it i had a lot of time so i know i had a lot of time that i stressed over joint compound and period so it took a lot a lot of time like 15 or so days before i was like all right you know what let me just finalize this thing man let me let me just do it but as you see here we're doing one more thing here called the corner bead uh outside corner bead and what it is essentially cut it put it in place make sure there is a gap within the spatula that way you have stuff to fill this thing up with to make it into a corner and as you see again with the orbital sander i'm like hey it's gonna make life easier and yeah i had to do a second and third layering as well once i finished so it kind of patched up those holes there but as you see this is the second and third layering pretty much put it on for the second layer you know take it off third Put it on, take it off. Skim layer, that's what they also call it. This is the way to proof check your corners. Make sure you don't have anything like pox or your tape is not bubbling out. If it is, take a razor blade, cut it, and then fill it up. And then you'll be able to make more you know, improvements onto your wall. You want your walls to look nice and tight. And honestly, before I finished all of this, I then realized, oh, crap, I could have used a texture on my drywall compound to eliminate all of these little, you know, pock looking things, these imperfections. If I used a drywall texture like uh, orange peel, it would have padded up everything and make it look nice. Now here you see, I got a little bit of red blood in there, blood powder, just getting this that chalk line again. And I'm mixing it in so we could see where we do our little touch ups on after we checked it around with the light to get that little pock check. For those little holes all those little holes matter man and then sand it down nice and smooth you can see it's not bumpy bumpy anymore it only made my room look like cocaine heaven i don't use cocaine i swear to <laughs> but yeah next up we're gonna go ahead and do prime painting inside and outside of the pot so i'm gonna pour as much as i need and if i don't need that much i could just take some out just like that Hit up the boy Prince of Persia, if anything. And yeah, I'm cutting the corners with the brush because that is the most important part. You have to do these corners out. I'm doing like two brush lengths, uh, pretty much as much as the joint compound is on there. Now I'm going to take this rolly brush, going to roll it a good like 25 or so times until we get this nice, smooth, all around, no problem primer on this paint roller. And then once we get this paint paint roller painted up, we're going to paint the wall with the paint roller. You know, we got to do zigzags. Your boy was doing a little bit up and down. I was getting stuck. We got to do a zigzags. You can see here I did my first layer and you can see after brighten it up, you can see right through it. So that's why you have to do multiple layers, which I've done. I did the outside with the prime one coat and then a paint primer kind of worked. And you can see right here I did a little bit of a pattern mess just to kind of like patch up some you know, holes and stuff. Also, to get creative, my mom bought this paint primer. It's gray. You can see here I drilled um, TV mount. This cup of ramen, it was nasty. It was stuff on the floor, paint chippings and drywall stuff. Had to clean up the floor so I could put this insulation inside. This is a quiet walk. This will help vapor barrier the floor. Also make it quiet to step on as I'm stepping on right now the whole time. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and apply that tape. Make sure it's all gooch and the cooch. 
so then I could do my flooring. Before flooring, I got to do spacing. For bamboo, I got to make it half an inch. That's why I'm using two spacers combined. And as you can see that I'm plying it on the wall, that's how it is. Taking another piece of bamboo, marking the spot. I should have marked closer in this one. Mistakes happen. It's your boy's first time. You know, give me a break. I'm still on the circle saw. Keep in mind, no miter saw. Miter saw would have helped your boy out in the long run, man. You can see I got stuck here. We had a little bit of burnt, but it ain't a problem for the G. That's going to be, you know, on the edge where nobody's going to see nothing. So it's okay if I made a little bit of imperfect cuts in terms of angle or straights. Now I'm going to take this Euro Bond and put the glue in so we solidify this floor. And keep in mind, it is really good. It works. Just do not overfill it because if you overfill it, then you're going to make a gap in the wood because the glue is not going to find a place to leave. So keep that in mind. I did make that mistake somewhere, but, you know, this mat is covering it. I don't see the problem. <laughs> After the three layers is done, though, I'm going to go ahead and take some masking tape to solidify this. And I'm going to wait like an hour. I think I waited like two hours, three hours, maybe. I got lazy. That, that's just the way it is. Afterwards, you peel it off. That way it's solidified. And if I'm to bump it, you know, it's not going to move. This is great in order to get a good foundation. And yeah, I reapplied the same technique. Just place and cut, place and cut. Make sure it's spaced out half an inch all around for expansion. And gooch! Now I'm doing the trim. I'm going to measure one side, the next side. And we're going to go ahead and cut these trim pieces. A good tip is to buy more trim pieces than you need. Because this trim stuff, man, it's annoying. Especially at 45 degrees angle. Boy, that thing ain't cool. But as you can see, your boy did what he could do somehow. And now I'm tracing out the cut for this fan, as you see right here. I use a hex saw. I use a spade drill bit. All those. That circle right there, as you can see, got a little booty boop. You can see my wires go right through there. And that's pretty convenient for me since the fan was right there, you know. I'm taking this nailing gun. Thank gosh my cousin came through, man. This thing saved me so much time. And I didn't get to damage my floor <laughs> with the hammer. I have quarter rounds. This is when I finally got the miter saw from my cousin. Um, I'm saying finally as in I finally realized and I should have got it. But yeah, that made the floor perfect. Now I'm doing the door jam. This is pretty much cut the jam around. Although I did this wrong, I do admit. Um, but this part is all good. You're just cutting out the places for the uh, hinges that's like 10 inches from the bottom up five inches top down and I place this door this door I had to get cut from my cousin uh, using a wall table saw or a table saw not a wall saw what the hell you have to make sure the door is like an eighth of inch like leeway between all of the jams it's best to build this door frame outside it's also best to just make sure you make your build around this door frame as i mentioned because this was a whole hassle a whole lot of stress in my head but in the end we got it cut and it's nice and i have um i have some what's the thing bondo that i could put on the end but yeah i drilled the doorknob and the hinge plate whatever or whatever that thing is in there so you can see with the kit piece now for the door lock piece I'm using a chisel, chisel. I wish I had a smaller one, but in the end, I still got it. The drill did go all the way through that jam for that lock, and it is what it is. That's how it had to be. But you can see, I finished. All right, guys and girls, hopefully this video was informational to you guys and girls who just want to build something and see how it gets started. You want to see a professional monkey like your boy doing it. That's how it's done. And now that we're at the end, I feel like now's a good time to talk about the price not that much when you think about it in total i have about one thousand five hundred sixty one dollars and 85 cents so pretty much a little bit less than a macbook pro if i'm not mistaken and if you already own the tools i actually deduct that as well it came out to one thousand four hundred two dollars and 84 cents now that's definitely lower than a macbook pro you can see here this is pretty much all the tools that I bought, all the material. And you could take a pause anytime to look at all the different things that I used here because I'm not going over all of this. This video is long as already. And yeah. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to hit a thumbs up to support your boy. Also hit that subscribe button. It'll help your boy out when it comes to making more videos and reaching out to more people. So yeah, it is your boy, Justin. Oh, Moe. With that being all said, 
Peace. I'm out. And please have yourselves a damn good one.